Welcome to 2019 everyone, I'm back, this is the first video of 2019, so Happy New Year everyone, and let's talk about 2018 first. 2018 was an amazing year for tech, like honestly. Not only have all the major smartphone manufacturers adopted a notch style design, apart from Samsung that is, but the ones that did adopt such a design have improved it massively over the course of a year. So that by the end of 2018 we had phones with a considerably smaller notch than at the beginning of 2018. It's not just phones that got a big improvement, it's also laptops as well. So laptops have gotten quad-core processors from dual-core and six-core processors from quad-core thanks to Intel's 8th generation chips and then the Apple A12X processor inside the iPad Pro 2018 is almost as powerful as Intel's top-of-the-line 8th generation laptop processors, which is crazy. Then AMD has released the second generation Threadripper processor with 32 cores, 64 threads. This is an absolute monster of a processor. I've actually made a build with that processor and that's what's actually rendering all the 3D concept models that you see on the channel. Nvidia has released their RTX 2080 series. So yeah, we've had a ton of innovations in the world of tech. And 2019 is looking to be even crazier and even more exciting than 2018 was so yeah welcome to 2019 everyone and here's my list of top 10 upcoming tech products that i'm really really looking forward to so grab some popcorn some 2019 manufactured popcorn and enjoy Now, these are not in any order, by the way, but the first one that I want to talk about is the brand new Mac Pro. So, Apple announced the current generation Mac Pro back in 2013. Yes, six years ago in 2019, which is crazy. Can't innovate anymore, my ass. <laughs> And what's even crazier is that Apple's selling this at almost the full retail price from 2013 when it came out. Now, the whole idea behind Apple's Mac Pro is that it's Apple's most powerful computer that they sell, designed for those who want the highest amount of performance. It comes with an Intel Xeon processor, ECC or error correcting code memory, flash storage, not one, but actually two graphics cards, and a ton of ports, including not four, but six Thunderbolt ports. But you see, the problem here is that since this thing hasn't been updated in like six years, even something like the 2018 Mac Mini is a better choice in terms of the performance than the Mac Pro is. Luckily, Apple is working on a brand new Mac Pro, and Phil Schiller himself even confirmed this in an interview with TechCrunch that the new Mac Pro is a 2019 product. So what can we expect from this? Well, mostly Apple to fix all the issues or most of the issues that we had with the current generation Mac Pro. So the thermal system was quite bad. The GPUs were not upgradable. Now, Apple did say that they are working on a modular Mac Pro that Pro have been asking for for years, but honestly, I wouldn't expect Apple to release, you know, a desktop case PC style Mac Pro. I, I don't see Apple doing that, but rather something that's quite small, a tiny bit bigger than the current generation Mac Pro, but something that comes with modules that you can buy from Apple. You know, a GPU module, a CPU module, a RAM module, and so on. Modules that you can just uh, slide into the Mac Pro and you can easily upgrade. So a very, very user upgradable Mac. That's what I would put my money on. Regardless, I'm really looking forward to the new Mac Pro. If it's really good and if it doesn't cost me both of my kidneys then I might actually get one. Next up we have the Sony PlayStation 5. Yes, the PS5. So the PS4 came out in 2013 and we are expecting a brand new console either in 2019 or in 2020. And there have been a ton of leaks and rumors surrounding the PS5. I've actually done a full video on everything that's new in terms of the PS5, so check it out here if you want to know more. But essentially Sony has confirmed that they would not be attending E3 2019 which is quite strange because this is the first time in 25 years that Sony won't be attending E3. Now, this is either because Sony has literally nothing to announce in 2019, or it's because they want to, you know, have their own dedicated event and announce something way, way bigger. We know that Sony is already working on the PS5 and some developers have already gotten their hands on it. And, you know, if Sony doesn't release the PS5 in 2019, we can at least expect an announcement or a teaser for the PlayStation 5 to release in 2020. Now, 2018 was the year of notches, and 2019 is going to be the year of holes. Notch holes, that is. So Samsung has already showed us some of their upcoming Infinity Display Panels for 2019, such as the Infinity U, the Infinity V, the Infinity O, as well as a new bezel-less Infinity Panel. The Galaxy 8S, Samsung's first smartphone with an Infinity O panel, has already been previewed and announced in December 2018. So that's already official and it's coming out in February. And based on all the leaks that we've seen, we know that the Galaxy S10, the Galaxy S10 Lite, and the Galaxy S10 Plus would all be coming with an Infinity O 
single panel. Now, the thing is that Samsung would be selling those displays to other manufacturers as well. So expect phones from LG, possibly even Huawei, to come with a notch hole. Let me know in the comments if you guys would prefer a notch hole or a full-fledged notch, like something we have on the iPhone 10. Personally, I would actually go with a hole. Then another big thing in 2019 is going to be 5G connectivity. Now, 5G is a technology, as a technology itself is actually massive, so it supports speeds of up to 10 times the speeds of 4G. So that's up to 10 gigabits per second, which is absolutely insane. Realistically, you won't be hitting those speeds, just, you know, about one gigabit per second, realistically. But anyways, it means that even with this speed, you would be able to stream 4K games in real time at 60 frames per second to your smartphone, or portable game console. So yeah, the implications that 5G has are just incredible. And in 2019, we would start seeing the first 5G capable smartphones, most likely with the launch of the Galaxy S10. However, don't get too excited because we barely have any 5G antennas in the world right now. And once 5G is fully implemented, you know, since it operates at a higher frequency than 4G does, up to six gigahertz, the range is obviously shorter because of that. So it requires more cellular towers to be placed at a shorter distance from, you know, one another which is something we don't have at the moment. I predict 5G to be fully implemented by 2025, but yeah, don't expect to get speeds of 10 gigabits per second and, you know, 5G signal everywhere until then. But something that I'm really, really looking forward to in 2019, and it actually seems very likely to happen, is a brand new iMac design. Finally. So here's the thing, the iMac Pro, which is Apple's newest iMac, which itself came out in December 2017, with the exception of, you know, the space gray color, it had the exact same external design as the regular IMAX, which had the same exact design from the front ever since 2009. Yes, the IMAX have had the same front design for the past 10 years, a decade. What are you doing, Apple? And considering that Apple has not updated the iMac at all in 2018, a brand new design is actually highly expected. So Ming Chi Kuo reported that Apple is working on some very big display upgrades for the new IMAX. Now, the iMac Pro's display is already a 5K display. It supports 10-bit color. So the only logical upgrade would be a larger display with even thinner bezels. Here's this another concept on how the new iMacs could look like in 2019. I'll make a separate video on all of this, so definitely subscribe, hit the bell icon if you're new to the channel, and you want to see that video and more cool videos as soon as they come out. Next up, we have some very big upgrades when it comes to TVs. So you know how it was always weird that Samsung was the leading manufacturer in smartphone OLED displays, but Samsung never sold a single OLED TV. Well, in case you're wondering, that was because Samsung was mostly focusing on not OLED, but micro LEDs, basically developing their own tech, something that's even better than OLED, and yeah, that's micro LEDs. So the thing with micro LEDs is that they're basically miniaturized versions of the LEDs that you see in, you know, stadiums and so on. And they have all of the advantages that OLED displays do, such as perfect black, since you can turn on and off individual pixels when you wish, but none of the disadvantages, such as burnout. Uh, all this and the display can also be much brighter than OLEDs, which at the moment top at about 500 nits of peak brightness, full screen brightness that is. Micro LEDs can go up to 1 million nits, so they can literally leave you blind, not even joking. Definitely something you want on your TV wearing sunglasses to watch your TV. But no, really, apart from the amazing HDR, which would be improved significantly, imagine having 2000 nits, even that would make a huge difference, full screen brightness of 2000 nits, constant, that would be insane. Uh, but those displays would also be modular. Samsung has just introduced a 75 inch micro LED TV, which comes in these blocks of micro LEDs. And if some of the pixels do burn out, you can actually replace individual panels, you know, instead of the full TV. And you can even connect multiple displays in order to make your TV be bigger. How cool is that? This is by far the biggest innovation in displays ever since OLED displays were introduced. And if you're into video editing or you're a gamer, you're gonna love this thing. So another big thing in 2019 is going to be laptop GPUs. So Nvidia has just announced at CES 2019 that the mobile versions of their new RTX graphics cards would be coming in 2019. Not only that, but they would be available starting the end of December. So the RTX 2080, yes, that's coming into a laptop. Obviously, it's not going to be as powerful as the desktop version, but it's still going to be 20% more powerful than the mobile version of the GTX 1080 uh, while consuming 40% less power. Then the RTX 2070, that would be 20% more powerful than the 1070, and the RTX 2060 would be 50% more powerful than the GTX 1060. Aside from this, laptops with a 2080 can be 15% lighter, 10% smaller, and offer 2.5 times more battery life, so up to 8 hours while using the dedicated GPU. I'm a bit skeptical about this, but I'll definitely test it out. But it's not just Nvidia that's aiming big for 2019, it's also 
you know, the red, the red team, AMD. So not only are we expecting the third generation Ryzen processors, including a possible 64 core, 128 thread Threadripper 3. That would be insane. That would chew through, you know, 3D concepts like crazy. But we're also expecting to see the second generation Vega GPUs, among with the second generation of Ryzen mobile CPUs, which AMD has already announced, literally announced like yesterday at CS 2019. So these are dual and quad core processors that also come with AMD's Vega 10 GPUs built into the chip, and they offer significantly better performance than Intel's integrated GPUs by up to 40%. So that's quite a huge improvement over what Intel has to offer on the GPU side of things. Then at number nine, we have a foldable, not chairs, but smartphones. At the end of 2018, Samsung has finally unveiled the Galaxy X, the foldable Galaxy X phone. It probably won't be called the Galaxy X, but this phone is a foldable one. And it was more of like a teaser rather than a full unveil because the phone was hidden inside a thick black case. But Samsung does plan on releasing this phone in 2019. And essentially, it's a small tablet that folds into a smartphone when you need something that's, you know, more portable and unfolds back into a tablet when you need something with a larger display. And honestly, this is the best of both worlds. Like, personally, I don't really use a tablet. So I've had many iPads over the years and I always use them for like the first two months or so. But then I just stopped using them because, you know, I can still do so much more from my laptop. Really, the only use for me when it comes to having a tablet is using it as a media consumption device. And you know, in that case, I already have a large screen phone anyways, uh, the iPhone XS Max and the Pixel 3 XL. So yeah, having a large screen phone that turns into a larger tablet for when you wanna watch a movie is amazing. But Samsung's not the only one focusing on foldable smartphones. We know that Huawei is also working on their own version of a foldable smartphone. And then Avon Blast has also leaked an upcoming foldable smartphone that was allegedly made by Xiaomi. So foldable phones are going to start appearing in 2019. And from there, well, this is this is basically the future, guys. And finally, in 2018, we started seeing laptops with thinner and thinner bezels. For example, the Huawei MateBook X Pro is a really good example of that. That thing looks insane. Well, Huawei has just announced the brand new Huawei Mate 13, which itself comes with a very thin frame around the display. And then the recently announced Asus ZenBook S13, which has the thinnest bezels on any laptop. That thing looks insane. And the way Asus managed to pull it off was by placing the camera above the display. So there you go. This device has the first outer notch. But yeah, let me know in the comments what kind of tech are you looking forward to the most in 2019? Subscribe and notifications uh, so that you get notified as soon as a brand new video comes out. Tap the bell icon. And this has been pretty much it. Thank you for watching. I'm Daniel and I'll see you guys in the next video. Zenofec, signing out. Cheers.